Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. So Google has just unveiled Genie 3. It's a brand new AI model that is capable of creating actual interactive worlds. It basically takes a text prompt and generates an actual interactive world with it. So you can generate some kind of helicopter and actually drive it around and continue generating things and everything looks consistent. It can generate interactive worlds, so technically kind of like a game, basically just a walking simulator, but technically kind of like a game. Honestly, in terms of tech, this is super impressive. I wrote about this in my Give That Report newsletter, so is AI getting closer to making games? This is a very important topic and something that every once in a while I get some comments concerned about this. I'm going to talk about that topic in a little bit. So here, like I said, Google has just unveiled Genie AI, so the latest AI model that creates interactive worlds. And yep, it is super impressive stuff. I also made a video on Genie 2 when it came out and the improvements are pretty massive. So you have this one was Genie 2 and it was very impressive at the time. I believe the biggest limitation is how it was limited to just a handful of seconds. Another big limitation is how it could not keep up with the state of the world. So basically, if you looked around and looked back, the world was completely different. And comparatively, Genie 3, this one is much more impressive. So definitely a big leap, and the other one came out just about 8 months ago. With Genie 3, you can generate a world from a single text prompt and walk around it while also taking actions. This is really the important part, the taking actions bit. Nowadays, it's honestly easy to take for granted how you can actually generate all kinds of things with AI. You can generate a world with pretty much anything you can think of. But actually interacting with that world, that is basically the next barrier, which now appears that AI is being able to do it. So here it supports promptable events, where you write a text prompt like spawn a dragon and suddenly it appears in the world. So these are events where basically you are walking around, you can write something, and if there you go, a man with chicken so show, suddenly shows up. Or perhaps a man with jet ski, or of course, since you can write anything, so it can even be some kind of fire-breathing dragon. But like I wrote here, so the most important things is how it is consistent, meaning how you can take an action, then look away, and when you look back, the world is actually in the same state. Like I said, this is one of the biggest limitations of previous AI models. Over here, they showcase some kind of interaction, painting some kind of house. And then it goes, it paints for a little bit. So it paints the wall like that, and now it basically looks away. And now, as soon as it looks back, usually on previous models, it would completely forget that there was even a wall there. Whereas over here, it remembers there's a wall there, and it is painted just like that. Then it's very important how it's also generating in real time 720p over multiple minutes. Like I said, that was the big limitation of previous AI models. They were only able to generate about a few seconds. So being able to generate multiple minutes of a real interactive world, that is generally impressive. And again, real time in 720p, that is also insanely impressive. Previously, it would only be able to generate something very small like 240p and it would run at like 10 FPS. Then on top of that, you can combine it with agents that automatically can take actions in the world. So basically, you can generate a world or a scenario kind of like a kitchen. Then on that kitchen, you can give the agent some kind of goal. Let's say approach the industrial mixer. And basically it starts generating that, so it starts generating the world, and importantly the agent actually takes actions on the world, and the world is being generated exactly as you expect. Again, this all starts from a single text prompt, so you can take all these actions, all these different things, the agent takes actions in the virtual world, and the virtual world reacts accordingly. So even like I wrote here, so this is extremely impressive technology. Whenever a new update on AI like this happens, I always get a bunch of concerned comments, mostly from students who are questioning whether they should keep learning game development and programming, or if there's no point since AI is going to take over the world. Yep, this really happens literally every single time. So every single time there's a new AI model coming out, I get either comments or emails or questions or all kinds of things asking, so is it still worth it to learn game dev, programming, those kinds of things? Or will AI basically take over the world and those skills are suddenly going to be useless? I get those kinds of comments all the time. And AI has been around, ChatGPT, I think it's been around for like three years at this point. And even back then people were saying, okay, so six months from now, programmers are no longer going to be required. And here we are like two or three years later. And of course that still has not happened. So basically when it comes to that, my answer has been the same, so my answer to that is quite simple, so don't worry. Simple because games are insanely complex pieces of tech. You need to be good at programming, art, sound design, music, game design, UI, UX, etc. This is something that a lot of people don't actually realize just how difficult it is to make a game. Not just difficult because it requires a lot of technical knowledge in one area, but because it requires a lot of technical knowledge, a lot of know-how in multiple different areas. You cannot make a good game if you're just good at programming. If you're just a programmer, your art is going to suffer, so the game is not going to be excellent. Your sound is going to suffer, music is going to suffer. In order to make an actual good game, you need to be insanely good at all of these areas and many more. That really is one thing that makes games unique. If you were to ask, let's say, can AI replace stock photographers? Chances are, nowadays, the answer is sort of yes. If you ask, can AI replace video makers? Previously, the answer was absolutely no, but nowadays that is getting closer to yes. But when it comes to games, like I said here, games are insanely complex. They require so many different things, which means that in order for AI to get good enough to make a compelling game on its own, it basically needs to become Super AGI. And when Super AGI happens, the world will change drastically, either into a utopia or dystopia, and we will all need to adapt to a very new reality. Therefore, I don't worry about it, and you shouldn't either. If when that happens, we will have bigger concerns. So if this is why my answer anytime I get this question is basically this, basically don't worry, basically keep on learning, these skills are going to be very useful for a very long time. If slash when Super AGI gets here, that will completely change the world and everything will be completely different. But until that happens, I would say adapt yourself to the current reality, 
And right now, learning game development, learning programming, those are still insanely useful skills, so I highly recommend you learn about them. And if slash when Super AGI happens and the world completely changes, then basically adapt to the brand new reality. And another big AI update this week was GPT-5. Personally, I haven't researched it yet much, but it seems to be another nice jump forward. So yeah, that's another AI model that was released recently. Although this one is also actually quite interesting. It is quite interesting how a bunch of people were apparently, let's say, disappointed, how it's not necessarily all that much better. It is supposedly better in some ways, but not necessarily, let's say, 10 times better. Basically, for the past few years, there have been people that have been thinking that AI is basically going to continue exploding just like this, or perhaps even just like this, and getting insanely more and more intelligent over time, whereas the reality appears to be more kind of like this. So massive improvements, but then a sort of plateau with just minor improvements. We can see on the AI leaderboards how it's better, but not necessarily that much better. So basically, that kind of calls into question this concept, Super AGI. If this current trend of AI reaches a plateau, then perhaps Super AGI is not necessarily as close as some people think. But again, regardless of whether it happens, regardless of if slash when it happens in the next 10 years, the next 50 years, doesn't really matter. Like I said here, for that same concern comment that I see every single time, my answer is still the same, don't worry. Keep on learning all those skills, keep on improving all those skills, because I do believe they will continue to be very valuable for a very long time. By the way, I wrote about this in my Game Dev Report newsletter. This is where I cover the latest Game Dev news and any interesting articles that I come across every week. I post a new issue every single Sunday, so check it out with the link in the description. Alright, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.